Hey there, God bless you all at Life Raft and everywhere else this video finds you. You know, I was um, running a few errands and trying to just kind of evaluate my inner man, my soul, my heart, what it was going through, the kinds of um, fear, anxiety, worry factor, or was it just joy? And I reflected back for a moment on a pretty amazing thing that was shown to me a few years back, and that was that in the garden, right, the very first thing that happened right after sin was I, I feared, Lord, that you would know I was naked. And if you think about that, here's sin. All of a sudden, it changes our very DNA. It changes us to the point where all of a sudden, something that we were never designed to ever feel in our lives comes upon us. It's called fear. Now, it's interesting because science is finally catching up with the Bible. The Bible, And if you look around and you think about quantum physics, these are, I'm talking about non-agenda driven science. You know, believers are naive when they don't understand that non-agenda driven science always confirms God. And it's either that or we don't understand some things yet. So let's take quantum physics. There is a quantum field that we've now been able to understand. It has not three or four dimensions, but it has 10. Now, here's the interesting thing about this quantum field. It has a thing called photons, and it's very quantum core. And there's an incredible experiment that they did where they took photons and put them into a vacuum, and they did nothing. And then they inserted into this vacuum. Just imagine a clear, you know, um, jar that you do jarring with for fruits and things and they put a dna in it and immediately the photons reacted responded and changed because they recognized the dna another interesting experiment they did is they took our dna and they found out that our dna will actually if you separate it from the human being and put a distance of 400 miles that's probably just because that's as much as we can measure at the moment scientifically speaking that dna changes at the exact same time as the person who has that dna does in other words if you scare me and my dna is 400 miles away my dna automatically knows it another interesting experiment is uh it's called the life of a plant i've talked about it a lot of times i would tie it into something different to here it was during world war ii and it was an experiment where this guy put a truth a lie detector test the probes into a plant just to see what would happen and at the exact same time a spider came across his desk and he went to um to tag that spider killed dead what he did there was an energy that came off his body, whether it was fear, whether it was get this bug now, whatever it was, right? Well, it turns out that that plant picked it up. What does all this have to do with anything? It has to do with our soul either lives in a frequency of love, which is God's channel, or a frequency of fear. And we've talked about this a lot at Life Raft, right? And here's the thing. I mean, aside from the fact that when we live in fear, it tightens up like a rubber band, our DNA, and it literally lowers our immunity system. So the enemy was really, really clever here, right? He's got people, billions of us, living in fear from the New World Order to the fake masks to whether or not this is real. The CDC comes out and says it's only 9,200 actual COVID only deaths, which is what everybody who knew immunity systems knew. And so you're, you're walking around and you're looking at all this and you're taking it in from the five senses. And here's my question. And man, it's a big one. And I'm asking it from my own life. Hey, Lord, if I'm operating in, in, the, in the frequency, in the soul of love, if I'm operating out of that frequency, your word promises me that perfect love casteth out all fear. That casteth out thing is so powerful. It just means that it just, it just repels it. In other words, we have the ability to put off a frequency that repels fear and attracts, attracts the world to the reality. 
realities of Christ, to the realities of what being a Christian is all really truly about. It's not about beating people over the head with Bible verses. It's not about, you know, telling them how wrong they are with this sin problem or that sin problem. It's about living a life grounded in love everywhere they see you. You know what's interesting is that if we do that under our own flesh, it becomes, there's a friend of mine just moved to a heavy community around Vegas that's hugely impacted by a large cult that's in uh, Vegas. And their whole thing is, um, works of the flesh. They're demonstrating their righteousness because they got to earn their way into heaven. So if you're doing this by your works of your of the flesh, it's not a genuine transformational experience. We're not trying to have a bigger, better God. We're trying to seek truth. We're trying to share truth and love. And you know what we should really be focusing on, right? Seek ye first the kingdom of God is holy righteousness. The kingdom of God is centered in love. Loving our neighbors, loving ourselves, loving our community, loving the people So I guess I want to 